Greetings, Gatewood Gators, and welcome to our December monthly bonus, the last one of 2021. I know that December is not known for being a big garden month, but that does not mean we can't appreciate all that nature has to offer. Last year, I talked a little bit about how Washington is known as the evergreen state because we have a lot of evergreen trees. Evergreen means trees and plants that last all year round, that stay green all year round. And we are going to be using some evergreen goodies in order to create beautiful art. I'm also going to be showing you how you can make some really fun wrapping paper by recycling your grocery bags because I don't know about you, I have a lot of grocery bags lying around. The first thing you need to do to prepare for this activity is to go on a walk in nature. Go ahead and walk around your neighborhood. You're going to be gathering some different things. We're gonna be making paint brushes using all things that are nature. I collected quite a few different types that I'm gonna be showing you. Um, I also looked for some small branches, small sticks that you can assemble your paintbrush on and create with. I'm especially excited for this one because it's going to be a double paintbrush. So get out, go enjoy some nature, look at everything and think, how can I turn that into a paintbrush? What would that look like if I dipped it into some paint and put it on some paper? Because this is you getting to be creative. I'll show well, Gators, I tried to find a variety of different textured greens to make our paintbrushes from. I made sure to gather some sticks that I can assemble with, but I also tried to get all different types of greens. So I've got some pine here, some fir tree here, I've got some cedar branches, and I also have one of my favorite things about the Pacific Northwest, lichen. So I also found some interesting looking tall grass that I'm going to try to turn into a paintbrush. You get to choose what you want to find. I hope that you had a chance to, one, get outside and appreciate all this beautiful nature that surrounds us, and two, find some fun textured greens. Like Now, in addition to your sticks or branches and your greens that you're going to use for a paintbrush, you will need something to tie them together. I have twine. This works pretty well. It's just, you know, standard string. You could use yarn even. I also have rubber bands. If you want to break these rubber bands apart and use them to wind and tie up, you can do that. And I also have dental floss because dental floss is always around the house and the waxiness kind of helps keep things in place and stay together. Even if you didn't want to tie your green to a stick, you could always dip it and spread it, kind of like mop it around um, to try out the different textures. But what I'm gonna do is I am going to break up some pieces and try to get like a little bit of a brush situation going here. So that means I'm going to snap a bunch of little pieces off and I'm even gonna trim them down a little bit just to make it all uniform, which means kind of the same level. All right, now that I have my little cluster of greens, I'm going to take my stick, I'm going to put it together. I'm gonna to hold all of these greens and the stick in place and use some of my dental floss to tie it together. So it can be a little tricky to do on your own, but if you were to do this with a friend or family member, that can make it all the more easy. After winding it around, I'm gonna tie my brush in place with a knot. And I have my first, whoop, my first paintbrush made out of nature created. Kinda looks like a little witch's broom too, I'm excited. Well, I have just finished up all of my little paint brushes using my variety of greens that I gathered on my walk. And I've also just kept some loose ones like this lichen or these little pines that already kind of have a branch to it to experiment with. My other supplies that I need for this project are just some paper, a pair of scissors, some sort of paint. Ms. Rachel was generous enough to lend me some gold, blue, and pink tempura paint. And if you have any handy, paper bag. 
All right, I have all of my brushes ready to experiment with. I also have some plain paper, but before I even get started kind of experimenting and playing around with painting on the plain paper, I am gonna show you how you can make some low budget, very green and recycled wrapping paper. If you have any presents that you wanna give or a surprise for someone, this is a great way to use some of your old paper bags. We're using a pair of scissors and maybe getting some adult help if you're if you're struggle a little bit with scissors. You can just cut down the side of the bag. I'm gonna make sure that I have the brown side facing in, and I'm gonna lay it as flat as I can on the page. Now, using my paint brushes, I am going to just get a little bit of. I think I'm gonna start with my gold paint. And I'm just gonna do a light tap. You don't need a big old glob. Just cover it up and uh, I'm just gonna do some brushing around it. Ooh, I'm going for abstract art. I'm not making anything in specific, just kind of a fun design. I like this pine one a lot. But I'm curious what my lichen is going to look like. I think I'm going to do pink for my lichen. I'm going to just do a little dip dip. Make sure it's coated. Maybe brush it off on the side a little bit. And now I'm just going to do some plops. Whoa. This is fun. You know what? I'm liking this lichen, but I really want to try now. I've been pretty excited about this. This is my double paint brush. I use grass on one side and pine needles on the other. So I'm gonna dip my pine needles in the blue. I'm gonna dip my grass in the gold. And I'm just gonna have some fun with it. Ooh. I'm gonna show you my wrapping paper. Ooh. I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry. Now, with this, you can either do abstract art like you did with your wrapping paper, or you could try to create something that you see in real life. I know that I really like animals and these brushes are kind of reminding me of porcupines. And so my goal is I'm gonna try to use this brush and press it down in a way to make it look like a porcupine. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with some pink. I got a pink po porcupine in my imagination. Get a little of that excess paint off, and I'm just gonna do my best. All right, I'm gonna start. I'm going to use my cedar brush to see about some gold. Ooh, Ooh that's making some cool spikes. I'm thinking I also want to make a baby porcupine, and that baby porcupine is gonna be blue. So let me see how well I can do a little baby porcupine. So these just look like little bursts of color, but once I use a little marker to add some extra features on it, they might just come to light. For my next art piece, I really like sheep. I went to a country called Iceland over the summertime and there were sheep everywhere we went. My sister and I had to pull off on the side of the road anytime we saw a sheep. So um, for a little holiday present, just to tell my sister how much I love her, I'm going to make a little uh, flock of sheep. And this type of lichen really reminds me of sheep's wool. So I'm wondering if I dip it into some gold, if I can maybe make some little sheep blobs using it. Now, just remember, you know, it doesn't always turn out how we want it to, but that's okay. Cause then you can kind of expand on it and make something that you didn't even plan. That's just as awesome. So I just put a little bit of gold on here and I'm just gonna do some little, some little puffball sheep. Ooh, it's kind of fun. There we go. Again, doesn't look like much, but once it dries, we're gonna add some special details to it and it's gonna look even more fun. Well, I am at home. My paper is nice and dry, so I am going to turn this into wrapping paper. You can either leave it as is, you can crinkle it up a little bit more for some texture, make it look kind of old and weathered. It's really your choice. And then when you are ready to go ahead and get wrapping, you can start cutting the edges just to make them nice, straight, even lines. All right. I am going to flip my paper over. Whoop. Have a handle. I'm gonna take that off. And I'm gonna go ahead and wrap a hat that I made for my friend. Now, 
So just put a final touch on it. I'm gonna use some of that twine I used to create my paint brushes and I'm gonna tie a little bow. And just for kind of a fun little, little spritz of green, I am going to go ahead and tuck a piece of green in. And that way, my friend will not only know that I made this with love, but what I used to make it with. I have my dried, finished artwork here, my little porcupine splatters, as well as my little blotches of sheep. I am going to use some Sharpies. You could use markers, crayons, colored pencils to add on to your creations or keep it abstract, your choice. But I'm going to try to make these little blobs into to real animals here. So I'm going to go ahead and start with my porcupine. I'm just going to get a simple black Sharpie and you know, add a little face. <laughs> finished doodle. I've got my two happy little porcupines. Now for my sheep for my sister for this holiday season. I know she loved her sheep when we were on our travels so I'm gonna try to just draw some some little sheep heads. Come <laughs> They're all prancing around. Whether you decided to go the wrapping paper route using recycled paper from grocery bags or making a special piece of art for someone you love, I hope you had a fun time and got creative and had a nice excuse to get out into nature and just appreciate all the beautiful trees and bushes and green that's surrounding us even in December. I will see you all next year for our January monthly bonus, the first one of 2022. Happy holidays, everyone.